Oh, hello. I'm going to tell you why Encrypted Messenger is free. At this point, it hasn't really been maintained or tested for about a year. I've had some people download it and ask me to make a couple of changes to it. And it's really something that hasn't been tested in a long time by me. And I'll give you a little bit of history. Back in uh, 2000, the year 2000, on New Year's Eve, January 31st, I spent about 10 hours, you know, start to finish coding this little program to make it so that when you're talking on Microsoft's Instant Messenger, it would attach to it and it would encrypt the messages for you. And I remember my wife saying, that's never going to work. No one, nobody wants that. And I was like, you know, just leave me alone. Let me do my thing. So I finished my thing and I released it for free saying, anybody who wants to use it can use it for free. And that was pretty much the end of it. I used it to talk to a couple of my friends and they used it to talk to some of their friends. Uh, so a few months later, I got a call from a company who said that they wanted to use it for, you know, for, co for commercial purposes. But they wanted a bunch of changes, and so I, put, I went, sat down, lis listened to what they want, put together a bunch of all the changes that they wanted in the system, like they wanted to be able to do files and a couple of other things, and they didn't want to have to mess with firewalls. And I built it so they could have like a five or six party conversation using encrypted RSA keys and all sorts of cool things. And then that kind of parlayed into other versions and other versions. I think I'm on version 3 or version 4 at this point. And uh, a couple of interesting things is it was downloaded by the NSA, the Department of Defense, the IEAE, the International Energy Atomic, the IAE. The, basically, it was d downloaded by the people over in Iraq that were doing the weapons inspections. It's just because I would sit there and watch where the downloads were coming from, and I could trace the IPs back to you know the Depart Department of Defense, the NSA, the IEAE, whatever it's called, and, and a couple other places. And... I'm actually really glad that I only use 64-bit RSA encryption. In case you don't know, there's 64-bit, which is, you know, it, I mean, it's good enough to, to keep your boss or your spouse or something like that, but it's not going to stop a government. And uh, and instead of 128 or 256 or 1024-bit or something, that's that's going to that's going to take a lot more power to crack. So just so you know, if you're using this, it's fine for, you know, not letting the the guys in your um, IT department read your messages, but it's not going to be good for, um, you know, stopping the NSA because um, they downloaded it and they didn't contact me or anything, so I'm guessing it's okay to use. Because, I, you know, if you know who Phil Zimmer Zimmerman is, he wrote pre PGP, Pretty Good Privacy, and you can read about all the things that happened to him when he wrote something that they couldn't crack. So that's why it doesn't have the super, super good encryption. Now, I, there was a version that I wrote for someone um, just kind of a, a test because they, they had this, this little key fob that they wanted it to work with and to make it work with the key fob I, mean, I had to tie it into Microsoft's built-in encryption uh, you know you, it has a, it has built-in encryption in the operating system that does the RSA encryption and all that kind of stuff and I had and I had a version that did that uh, it never went anywhere um, I showed them look it works and I said okay great and then that was it so nothing ever happened from that um, I'm going to also give out the source code for this thing for free. Uh, you know, this was written a long time ago, and I wouldn't really recommend doing some of the things the way I do them now. There's a couple of cool things in there. Um, probably the coolest thing is how you can take a window handle, and a te that's an Internet Explorer window, and from the window handle in Visual Basic 6, you can get a, a, a DOM from it document object model and be able to go through and make all the changes and everything. And that was primarily so that I could get it to work with Yahoo Messenger, which by the way was an absolute royal pain in the butt. But once I got it working, it's actually pretty slick. Um, there's a windows.xml file that goes along with this, and this, excuse me, is more or less the configuration file, and it has uh, which kind of windows to look for to make sure that it knows which, when to stay on top and how to, and how to follow the windows around the screen and things like that. Uh, before I put this video, to, video together, I did go through and I tested it with uh, Windows Messenger, I don't know, 5 or 6.0, and the latest version of Yahoo Messenger, and that's pretty much it. So at one point it worked with uh, Google Talk, um, AIM, uh, ICQ, uh, India Times Messenger, just a I don't know, about 10 or 15 different programs. And the way the XML file is written, it's really not going to be that hard to go through and add it to work to something else. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm not using it much. Uh, I think 
at one point I had a press release saying it was going to be free to all U.S. military members, and it's been used a lot by, by you know, military guys, uh, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan and South Korea and wherever. Um, so it was being used in Guantanamo Bay at one point by some guys in Cuba. They asked the sergeant if it was encrypted. He said, or not the sergeant, what, whatever their leader guy was. I'm not in the army, so I don't know the rules. And they asked him, and he said it's encrypted. He said, okay, fine, you can use it, and that's kind of about it. So this is it. Uh, if you have any questions, call me. If you don't know how to find my phone number, then you can shoot me an email. If you don't know how to find my email, I can't help you. Bye-bye. <laughs> and have fun with it. Oh, and as a side note, I'll also release the source code to Transparent Windows as well. They were both kind of written around the same time period, VB6, uh, Windows 2000. This was before XP came out when, some of, when this stuff was written. And since then, I moved on. I, I do stuff in C Sharp and VB.net and things like that. So, oh, there is a little bit of it. The hook that you use to um, grab the enter key, you know, has, sometimes you type and it detects that the enter key is, is a hit, and then it grabs it and does a bunch of stuff to send the message out there. That part was written in uh, Visual C++. Although I did actually figure out a way to do it entirely in Visual Basic. Uh, essentially, you, ha you create a um, VB com object, but you don't use any of the com stuff. You just kind of you just leave that there, and you do all the all the other code using API calls and things like that. I mean, it's, do it's doable. You know, you can pretty much do anything in VB if, as long as you don't mind doing everything in the API. Okay, bye bye. All right, there's a little bit more. I'm going to pull it up and show you a little bit on the program as well as basic usage and things like that. And one little interesting story. At one point, it got popular enough to be pirated. And I thought that was kind of cool. You know, they figured out how to bypass my little, my poorly written, uh, kind of a last minute thought program for uh, key generation and things like that. And they, um, they hacked that. But what's interesting is they didn't just crack it. They made sure to send me an email and let me know that they were the ones who cracked it and this is where I can download it and everything. You know, it wasn't like, um, you know, I just kind of found about it. They wanted to make sure they knew that they cracked it. I'm like, and you know, I guess kind of karma comes around because I remember when I was a, a kid back in the BBS days, you know, I wasn't always perfect. I'm a lot better at it now. But so, you know, at first I was, I was kind of disappointed, but then I thought about it and I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of cool. I made something that they thought was worth the time to crack. So, either that or maybe there's, there wasn't much left for them to crack, and so they were just going for an easy one. Um, my computer's have Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you. I went to plug the little, um, uh, what's this thing called, Firewire thing into my machine, and there's a, to uh, take this video, put it on the computer so I can put it on the, on the internet so you can watch it. And when I did that, I had a big old spark, and my computer was shut down, and now it's slowly coming back up. So I'm dealing with that. In a little bit, I'll show you some cool stuff.